Hello and welcome my geriatric starfish. I found this kind of cool website that allows you to randomize towers. I can just generate at my will. Just go clickety 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 click and I get any two towers in the entire game randomized. Uh, if I want to disable them, all I have to do is click them so I can say, well, it's not going to be possible to beat two tower chimps with a farm or a village. Let's just take them off. But I think I can do it with almost any other tower in the game, kind of. So that's what I want to do today. Try to beat a two tower chimps by generating a random set of towers. Let's begin! We get a sniper and a heli pilot. Okay, is it possible? I'll start off by saying that I'm gonna pick any map that I desire. Any map that I desire for this run because I feel like that's just fair when you're doing a two tower randomized chimps. Um, but here we go, we've got a sniper start in here. I think ideally I'd really like to go for some sort of uh, shrapnel shot as soon as I possibly can. But that means I have to buy night vision goggles first, and I might not be able to figure that out, so I might have to swap to uh, possibly a faster firing instead, just to get going here. But uh, I don't know. Let's let's see how it goes. I have a crusher ready to go. That might be enough to get us through round seven. And if I can get a shrapnel shot, though, I think I might actually survive until a heli pilot. All right, there we go. A nice little uh, drop down right there, and round seven is done. Can we beat on into round eight? All right, we're going for it. Night vision goggles. Shrapnel shot is 485, so it's going to be pricey. We need another 100 bucks. We need to beat round eight by ourselves here, and I don't think that's going to be possible. Our first two tower random chimps is maybe possible. Oh, maybe. Maybe. That was kind of a bad chomp. Bad chomp. Let's see if that works better, but I don't think so. There's going to be more blue and stinking through. And, uh, yeah. Right, quick, uh, fast firing. Let's see if that's gonna work for us. And, uh, if I can survive for just a couple more rounds, maybe get another chomper playing here. Again, maybe a shot is possible. It's kind of a weird round, because I need to put him on strong to get this going. And it turns out that there's a lot of red balloons here, which, of course, I need to use the crusher on some of them. The good news is, is that I'm actually pretty close to shrapnel shot again. I'm only about $300 off. And if we can be at round 10, we will be able to get it. And the nice thing about round 10 is it's all blue balloons. So it's a single shot per kill. Oh, hot diggity dog. This is not looking all that good here. I definitely need to go for this big group of blue balloons here. I've got to hang on for a little bit longer. It's, there's a chance. I mean, there's a real chance here, but oof, we get a good chunk of them. The blue balloons near the back of the map. We're not going to be able to force shrapnel shot. We can't afford even fast firing, and the sniper run is done. Again, huge shout out to all of you guys. Thank you guys so much for clicking the, clicking the settings button. Type in SJB in the critter support section. It means a lot to me, and I just want to say again, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Okay, let's try another set of two tower champs. All right, we got Buccaneer and Engineer. All right, let's see if we pull that off. The nice thing about this combo is that I can do either, uh, other, either tower here. Um, to start, I can do a Buccaneer if I really wanted to say that I for sure I'm going to do some sort of crazy flagship carrier or something like that to, to beat this game and then try to put him on top, but I don't think that's possible or reasonable to assume. Or I can just go straight for my Engineer, which is a much better start uh, tower, but we have to know what is going to be the long-term play here. What do we need to worry about? And I think the big issue here is camo detection, unfortunately. And if I go for a third tier cleansing foam to deal with any sort of camo balloons whatsoever, I think that this will not work out very well. Um, so I'm gonna have to rely on my boat for camo detection for a long time here. So um, this does get tricky right from the get go, but I think my best plan of action here is to go for a quick 1-0 uh, engineer and probably plan for a top path engineer for as long as I can get it. So when doing these types of plays, thinking about cross paths is extremely, extremely important because realistically, we have to make sure we have every type of blue pop and power, but not just every type of blue pop and power to a certain degree, to a pretty high degree. I mean, if we want to beat round 90, 95, 99, we need to have some expert level towers that could pop DDTs, camo balloons, uh, even the bad balloon here, which is just kind of absurd to even imagine two towers doing all of that. So, um... I think the best plan for me, though, is that I need to go for cam detection on this Buccaneer. Unfortunately, he's going to be my basically my only cam detection for a long time, so I have to go for a bottom path. And I get to decide between either a Pirate Lord or the uh, Flagship Carrier. And I think the Flagship Carrier used to be a great tower for this, but now he doesn't pop a lead balloons automatically unless I get the cross path here. So unfortunately, I am stuck going for a cannon ship to pop the camel leads, even on round 59, but even to have some sort of inkling of DDT pop and power in the late game. So far, things are going pretty amazing. Uh, we got a pir uh, Monkey Pirates already on round 35. That's cam detection Monkey Pirates, by the way. Um, and now I still have 
the opportunity here. If I want to swap from going top path engineer and swap instead into a middle path engineer, that is, I don't want to call it a good idea, but a, a possibility. All right, and the reason why is because we will have a decent amount of popping power here for quite a while. Pirate Lord can usually handle all the way up to round 80, almost no problem. We're going to have some extra insta kills on top of that, um, but getting a top path engineer isn't going to really help us out that much like more than a pirate lord but doubling the pirate lord and his cam detection capabilities and giving us that cleansing foam to just decamo and de lead balloons might actually be a more efficient way to do it um in addition if we can magically pull this off which i'm not saying that we can if we can get an ultra boost going it's going to cost us about a hundred thousand dollars here to get him flowing in here we can ultra boost the pirate lord to make him even more powerful and hopefully run this into the super late game with a mega powerful pirate lord again kind of a pipe dream here but uh, I think it might be my best option. Like, if I really want to beat Chimps, I think that is the only way it's going to happen. So, uh, here we go. Monkey Pirates for now. I think we're going to go Pirate Lord first. We'll still have the ability to decide later on if we want to go for a top path or a middle path. All right, round round 75 right now. Things are still going pretty smooth. We've got over 40 grand saved up at this point. Engineer still has not been upgraded. Just a base 2-0 Engineer here at this point. Um, pretty, pretty good, but we're going to soon have to make the decision. So, uh, of course, Central Champ, we can buy him right now. We've got the money for it. We can never spend another dollar ever again. Or we can go for the overclock. Start trying to save up another... Oh, gosh. We're going to need another, like, 60 grand. We need, like, 100 grand total to make this happen. Um, which will not happen until probably the 90s, if not beyond. So, Pirate Lord's really going to have to do an amazing job here. Otherwise, it's just... It's not going to happen. Uh, I guess we'll just kind of wait it out and see. Oh, my gosh. We're less than 30 grand away from Ultra Boost. And now we have Overclock, too. So that is going to definitely increase our overall, overall uh, uh, popping power here. I don't know. It, it looks like it's probably not going to happen, because even once we get an Ultra Boost, it's not like we're 10 times Ultra Boosted. We just have the ability to start getting a smidge more popping power. So um, we'll wait it out. But uh, you know what? I have, I have a, a feeling that uh, it's a possibility. I don't want to say rocking it, but still alive on round 85. Still insta-killing a lot of balloons here. Overclock in less than 10k away at this point. Um, seems feasible. Uh, we've got a couple tough rounds coming up in here, and I think the big issue for us is going to be round 90. If we can't get this guy before round 90, we're going to have to actually insta-kill the DDTs and actually start popping them, which is probably the biggest issue for us. The actual popages, popaging, pop popping, pop popaging ding, 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 of DDTs itself. Um, I don't know if I regret going top path engineer as my uh, cross path here, but it probably would have been better to go bottom path just to slow things down a little bit, but I don't think it would have mattered much, man. Um, yeah, probably doesn't matter. All right, here we go. We're going to go for one quick insta kill. We're going to overclock this guy. Just, just keep in mind, overclock does matter here. Uh, the timing of it uh, matters a little bit because this thing only lasts about two thirds of the overclock. So, uh... Uh, you want to make sure you use it, like, right when you actually need it, basically. Right about $5,000 away. Uh, lots of small balloons here. Hopefully big chunks of money. We can even insta-kill the bigger balloons like this. Oh my god, we might actually get this, uh, ultra boost by the time we get to the end of round 88 here. Maybe at the beginning of round 89. Alright. Not bad, not bad. Pirate Lord! I mean, if anything is, is shown off right now, it's the expert level awesomeness of Pirate Lord. Um, he really is doing all the work right now. I and mean, of course, getting overclocked a little bit, but look at the pop count. What is what he got? 15,000 to 685,000. Who is doing the two tower chimps today? Who is doing it? I mean, let's be honest here. Um, yeah, uh-oh. This is actually a little scary, but nope, nope. We take it down. All right, a bunch of reinforced bow ups this time. That's not exactly as uh, exciting as I would have expected. A little bit of insta-kill action. Ultra boost is still a thousand-ish dollars away. So we're going to get it by the time we get around. I'm not going to use my power lord ability here, by the, by the way cannot use it. If I do end up using it, we might not get uh, uh, round 90 kill. Just want to throw that out there. All right, so still, unfortunately, still not at Ultra Boost level at round 90. But again, DDT should go down. I can insta-kill three of them in one single attack there. But now we're moving on around 91, and I still don't have this guy. The money is just really slow right now. Finally, Ultra Boost is up, and we're going to go straight into Ultra Boost action. Timing is not a thing anymore. I just want Ultra Boost as fast as I possibly can. Um... Definitely looks like he's attacking faster already. Whether or not he actually is, I'm not sure. Second Ultra Boost already ready to go. Round 91 is going to go down. 92 is a pretty beefy balloon level at this point. Um, but he currently is stronger than he used to be. Like, officially. All right, one Zomagad dead. 
Keep it flowing. A third Ultra Roost already. We are probably going to max this puppy out before we lose. But we got round 93 coming up. This is going to be DDTs that we're going to officially have to pop. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to try to pop these guys quickly by using my insta-kills. Instead, I'm going to wait it out, get more overclocks going, and then hopefully I can use my Pirate Lord ability to kill a couple of these DDTs, which you can definitely tell is the biggest worry for me. I am worried about DDTs in general. All right, another overclock. Halfway there, five times already. We can insta-kill three of these puppies. Let's see how this is going to go down with five times overclock action. It's going to get decamel-wise there. But they're still gonna be too powerful! Okay, so we can decamel them fairly early, but that does not mean that they're gonna get popped any quicker. Um, and I don't think more cleansing foam is gonna help us out. And it looks like no matter what we do, one DT is gonna sneak through. And here's the thing, even if we could pop round 93, it's not gonna make 95 any easier. I mean, we would get maybe two more overclocks in. Maybe, maybe, maybe pull out a third, but I just don't think it's gonna be enough here. So, um... Wait, 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 this is better than last time. But one DDT still gets through, dang! I already gave my all, tried about 10 times, but we have been defeated. All right, things are going not too bad right now. So uh, to get started in here, we did a cr quick uh, uh, dart monkey up to uh, uh, crossbow. Got our Atosaurus to get our lead popping power. That gave us all types of blue pop power in general. I mean, the leads and the uh, uh, cam detection right from the get-go. Atosaurus is able to pop leads, but clearly, for the first time ever, fortified leads are like minor issues. Um, and we do handle them, but uh, kind of barely there. Um, here's the thing, though. To survive, there's really only one way to do it. We've got to go crossbow master, like as soon as we possibly can. This guy is going to be the key to everything. But of course, getting him is going to be difficult because we already uh, are struggling hard. Crossbow, hanging on barely. Pink Bloons in the back. Can we manage? We're sniping like crazy right now, and unbelievably, with that positioning, we do survive with the sharpshooter. Holy crap, we have an actual opportunity to get a crossbow master here, but round 49. So, yeah, I'm thinking we're probably going to lose round 49, and we're going to have to go for a velociraptor, but it's not set in stone yet, so uh, we'll wait it out and see. Oh, yeah, 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 there it is. All right, um, kind of makes sense. We're going to go for a quick Velociraptor. I don't think it's going to be a big deal. We're going to move the Veloc Velociraptor all the way to the front here. I want him to hit the strong balloons. The higher pierce is really what we're after. The issue here is now we don't have a crossbow master for round 50. So we're going to have to deal with two Moabs with uh, possible Velociraptor movement play in motion. Not super excited about it, but you can tell the huge difference of pop power here with a Velociraptor compared to an Atosaurus. It's a big deal. It's a lot of damage. Um, and, like, we absolutely own round 48 when we just lost to it before. And round 49 is actually good enough money if we can survive this round. I think Crossbow Master is, uh, is ready to happen. So, yeah. Um, all right. This is looking actually a little rough here. Crossbow Master. We get him up and bam! All right. So, halfway through Chimps mode at this point with a Beast Handler Crossbow Master combo. So, we already have the money for a T-Rex. Now, this is the interesting part. T-Rex, when we buy him, that is the end. That is the most money we can spend on Beast Handler. And technically, I mean, we could go for the uh, Orca instead to spend more money. I mean, if we really want to. But, like, we couldn't get Lead Pop Power in the first place if we did not if we did do that. So, what's the point? What, what's the point? Um, this is really the only way to do it. So, now we are stuck with this the entire rest of the game. We cannot buy anything more. We're stuck after round, what, 55, 56? Um, with what we're left over. So... We're gonna have like 60, 70 grand by the time we lose me here, maybe. That's kind of ridiculous, actually, that these two guys can do that well. Um, but, but anyway, yeah, let's wait it out and see what happens. NGL. This is pretty good. Like, 50k saved up. Um, straight up domination. The thing is, Cross My Master by himself can pretty much solo up until round 80 on most maps. Like, most easy maps. So, like, this is not an absurd thing to watch. But... Uh, as far as pop count goes, Crossbow Master, 255, this guy, 85, that's really not bad considering he's been around for less long than the Crossbow Master, but this is where it's gonna get wild. After round 80, we've got some madness here. Um, the only thing we've got going for us is the fact that we can move the Beast Handler around a little bit, the T-Rex can go towards the front, go towards the back, wherever we need him, and he's also got this pretty sexy stomp here. Now, the stomp is not going to be amazing against the balloons, but it is going to be not too shabby against just keeping the balloons on the screen for a little bit longer, allowing my crossbow master to really do his job. So, again, I do not think that we're going to win this one. If we were allowed to get a Gigasaur 
by being by getting three other beast handlers and like making this happen like maybe that maybe i actually believe that that might have been possible but that would not be in the two tower champ spirit that would be cheating in, in a lot of stupid ways It'd be cool if beast handlers didn't need four uh t-rexes to to merge together and i could just get a gigasaur just because but um yeah it is what it is even round 82 is going down here. We're just about to save up $70,000 already. Pretty har har. So my girds, no my problem. That was terrible. Why did I say that? I don't know. But the biggest balloons in the game, man. We get double stun action on these guys. That was t also a terrible stun. Doesn't seem to matter though. Crossbow Master is still continuing on. So when people talk about Crossbow Master not being that great, I'm always like, well, what do you mean though? Like, yes, he's not as good round 80 plus, but he's not terrible. I mean, not at all terrible. He's still doing a great job in popping these balloons, and we're almost at half a mil here. He's got uh, 131 at this point, and the uh, major weakness with this um, combo is still just the MOA popping power in general. Uh, it's not the balloons, believe it or not. Even though Crossmaster's not amazing against balloons, T-Rex is pretty good against the balloons. It's still just getting through these big layers here, the Zomagots in particular. But we can go through multiple uh, Zomagots at the same time here, especially if we're able to target properly. So I'm kind of curious to see how this is going to go down. 87, already seemingly pretty difficult. I'm going to stomp the lower level blues here. Uh, let's stomp that. Oh yeah, that felt good. Keep this only got on the screen for a little bit longer. T-Rex is going to chomp some ceramics here. Ooh, I also have the T-Rex on, on strong right now. I think I want to switch him to first at this point. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's get rid of these ceramics now. Reinforced balloons definitely seem like they're a problem for both these guys. Um, T-Rex does an okay job against uh, Reinforced Balloons, but the Crossbow Master definitely struggle lugs. Um, specifically against these Super Ceramic Reinforced Balloons. Yeah, um, it, like, it can be done, but it's not easy. Not easy at all. So I'm gonna try to get a lot of these guys a little bit lower here. I'm gonna go for the, uh, the Stomp kind of last second here. Oh, I kind of need it against CDTs, though. We're gonna try to, try to beat it without? Can we beat it without? No, we can't beat it without. So now I have no Stomp. We're gonna hope the Crossbow Master is just God. Come on, Crossbow Master. Take down DDTs, bro. Take him down. You know you wanna. Take him down. Two down. Third one getting hurt. Getting damaged. And oh my god, he's a freaking god. He takes down even the toughest DDTs in the game. We're at $90,000 saved up. Just about to make it as far as we did with the uh, the Pirate Lord at this point. But we get into some major issues here very, very soon. A little bit afraid, not gonna lie. Oh my gosh, we're barely hanging on here. All right, I've been leaving the T-Rex just in the middle of the map, but I can micro him if I need to. I mean, that's something kind of important to note here. All right, another stomp, and 91 also goes down. Unbelievable! Ooh, this is bad news. This is really bad news. This is like the epitome of terrible news for my combo. Uh, we're going to move the uh, T-Rex to the bottom. I'm going to try to get my stomp flowing here. Boom. We're going to try to just keep everything on the screen for a little bit longer, but I don't think we're going to get through it. This is too many reinforced Moabs. Uh, dang. It was a good run. But round 92, I, I don't see us getting through this thing. I really don't. Um, we'll just speed it up, wait it out. I mean, maybe. We have, like, a very, very, very small chance here. Do I move him even lower? Oh, no. It's just too many. It, it's just done. If we do take that on run 92, no, run 93 is going to take us down, so... It was a good run. $94,000 saved up. And now we generate again and we get the mortar elk combo. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so to be completely honest, I don't know that you can do an elk start on like any maps at all. Uh, if there is one map, it's probably balanced. So I'm just going to give this a, uh, yeah, let's go. Let's go to balanced. Hey, okay, we can take it on round six. It looks like that's cool. Uh, uh, I think I have to go larger potions here just to survive, I think, round 7 or 8. And then we have to save up a whopping $810, which is seemingly quite impossible. Quite, quite impossible. So I think this run's going to be over pretty quick. But if I can get a mortar going, we might be able to make some crazy crap happen here. Alright, larger potions is sweet because it's large enough to basically explode an entire area around us. Um, and that's why this is just such a great map for the elk. Uh, especially in the very, very middle here. Um, unfortunately, getting any cross paths here isn't really going to do anything, so we have to just rely on an elk and just kind of hope that he's just going to be a beast for uh, through round 9 and round 10, I think. Even the big group rush of round 10, he's got a solo. Uh, oh boy. All right, this is looking... You know, uh, I mean, technically, we could technically go faster throwing before we can get a mortar. That might be possible, 
But I really don't want to do that because I know we're getting screwed after we get to round 11 or 12. Like, I just know it. You know what? Round 10 is going to go down. Mortar is going to be affordable. Yes! All right. Mortar is 810 bucks. We can afford him. I cannot put him in the... Oh, I can! I can put him right here. This is sweet. All right. We're officially started. Now, long term. <laughs> oh, crap. All right. So, I already went larger potions. So, that's just a thing. The question is, what do we do? Well... I mean, realistically, if we want to just survive for a little longer, getting a Transforming Tonic would be awesome, okay? He's super powerful. But realistically, getting the strongest damage is going to be better, okay? We're just got to power up our mortar as much as we possibly can just try to survive as long as we can. Unfortunately, there is no good camp detection for either of these guys unless we go for a bottom half mortar. So we need to go for a burning stuff mortar as early as we possibly can, go for a signal flare before round even 24, try to power him up a little bit, and then get him up to something that is going to be of reasonable value here, and that is where things are just going to fall apart. We're not going to get the Moab taken down, I can almost guarantee. Here's the good news. We can't officially afford the signal flare, um, but I think I'm better off going for the cross path first. Now, this is where it gets really goofy, because I almost always used to go Rapid Reload, but if I'm really gonna go for a uh, Bloom Incineration eventually, like if that's the plan, I think Bloom Buster is gonna be the better cross path here. So we're gonna go Bigger Blast and Bloom Buster, and hope that we can still afford a Signal Flare before we get to round 24, and then start buffing. Um, so far, things are going good enough, but even one blue sneaks through, and we're basically screwed. I can't really micro with the mortar. He's, he's kind of like unmicro on this map. He just has to pop things in the middle here, otherwise we're screwed. All right, signal flare is up. Um, let's let's run this puppy down, man. First circuit brew is up. <clears throat> that means this guy is going to be a smidge more powerful. But how much longer is this single signal flare mortar going to solo for? It, it can't be that much longer, can it? All right, we've run into our first issue here. Round 35. I'm going to go for the fast-throwing acid pool because... Uh, round 34, I'm sorry. Because these zebra balloons are killing us. So I'm going to put him on strong instead to try to pop the zebra layer because mortars aren't good against lead balloons. And we're going to see if that is magically going to end up... Uh, uh, yeah, okay, we get the round 34. But now we do not have the middle, middle uh, cross path of the elk, which is a smidge unfortunate. Smidge. A lot, a lot bit unfortunate. And Stronger Stim, though, is officially up. We get an even stronger bottom path mortar. Holy crap, even round 36 is actually going down here. This is pretty wild. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, dude, we're, we're going to lose against the boat, though. Get okay, so money-wise, again, like, we could have maybe gone for a middle path elk somehow and, like, tried to make it work. But without that, uh, here's our mortar. Here he is um, in all of his glory. We can burn through them very, very slow. We need to hit pretty much every single time here. And even with that perfect hittage across the board, we're going to get like 100 pops overall, which is not even close to what we need to get to get this uh, well popped, let alone all the balloons on the inside. So that run is over. But you know what? Elk boarded around 40 is actually pretty impressive. So we generate again. Oh, no. I didn't even know you could do duels. What the heck? Okay, that's definitely not going to happen. And we get... Ooh, Boomerang Mortar. That's a fun-looking one. All right, second time around, we're going to go for the Moab Press Glaive combo with a Signal Flare Bloom Buster for now. The good news is I can go for a Shattering Shells, and if I want to, I think I can pull off a Bloom Generation before I go for the Moab Dom. Definitely a reasonable thing to do. And then also, the first Moab and the first few Moabs should be pretty easy to take down. So that's the good news. Um, once we get to many, many mobs, that's not going to be the same case here. So I, I don't know how that's going to go down, but I, I, I don't know. We're going to have to wait and, you know, like check, check and see how that's going to happen here. Oh, crap. All right. All right. So with better micro this time around, significantly better micro, we're going to make this go down. Oh, maybe, maybe not significantly better. Oh, we can't hit zebras. I forgot. Oh, yeah. I can't hit, can't hit zebras. Oh, crap. All right. Boomerang. Clean them up. Oh my god! Alright, we cleaned it up that time with some expert level mic mortar micro. In addition, I also uh, put my boomerang on first, so yeah, that probably helped us out quite a bit here. So it should be noted that the shattering shells is more powerful than the burning stuff or the uh, signal flare itself, and that's why I decided to go for them. Um, in addition, it's going to be an extra $10,000 to get the Moab uh, Dom here, and I could not survive even round 46, I think, killed us. So, yeah. Um, definitely got some tough rounds ahead of us, boys. Um, even round 63 is going to be a tough round that we're going to have to take down here. But you know what? It is still not an impossibility, but might require some weirdo micro. Might. Maybe. Maybe more than that. 
because ceramics are on 49 are trying to sneak through already and we got zebras up the wazizzle oh my god this sucks uh, oh my god you know boys i'm calling it i don't think i can pull it off so generate and we get a sniper monkey ace which we know we can't do a sniper start we can't do a monkey ace start so we're just gonna go bleh. And we get an Engineer Ninja combo. The nice thing about this one is that we can get either a Ninja or an Engineer start. So we kind of get to pick what we want to go for here. I think the Engineer is probably the better play for us. Just get a quick 1-0 uh, going. You can survive pretty much however long you need to until the first camo balloon. The nice thing is the Ninja is also going to be camo detection for us. But he's not going to be all the camo detection we need. Which is the major issue at heart. Again, it's forcing us to go for that middle path engineer if we want to get enough camo detection. The cleansing foam is pretty much a necessity for us to get this going, which is where I believe that this run is going to completely fall apart. We are forced again to go for that overclock, and the question is, what ninja do we overclock? Because ninjas are meant to be in groups, a bunch of shinobis. And I think we have to go master bomber to be able to pop any sort of Moab class balloons in the late game. So can we overclock a master bomber to be good enough to actually take down all the balloons? unlikely but how far can we get At this point our run is already almost over um here's the issue around 51 i think is going to take us down and i don't think there's much i can do about it i could get the cleansing film and again we're stuck with that middle path engineer uh i don't think master bomber can take down round 78 by himself if he was able to though we could probably stick with the master bomber the entire game for our solo camera detection which would be amazing but again unlikely so this is all hypotheticals at this point let's wait it out just see where we land um see if we're forced to go for a uh, middle path engineer or we could just go for a top path just kind of survive against the balloons for a little bit all right our first loss is on 48 i think i'm forced to go cleansing foam and overclock here unfortunately it seems weird to do that right now but i get again i don't think we're gonna be able to get enough cam detection around 78 stuff and I, we're not gonna be able to afford a master bomber then it's just there's it's gonna be a loss at some point the question is like where <laughs> where are we forced to lose do you want to try to extend yourself out a little bit or do you want to go for the big shebang try to actually beat round 100 if we're gonna try to beat round 100 it's got to be something like an ultra boosted master bomber it's the only way it's gonna be even remotely possible but again extremely extremely unlikely oh and there it is round 49 i'm gonna call it that just sucks we're, we're, we're done we're done i even tried I really did try. And so we generate again. Give me something good. We get a sub super monkey. That is an interesting combo. So in my opinion, the only way this is going to work is if we get an, uh, an, uh, an I don't want to say energizer yet, but at least a nuclear sub. And to get a nuclear sub, we need to get uh, a super monkey before we get that guy, which is $2,700. So the, the unfortunate thing here is that the advanced intel doesn't do anything at this point. I can't afford a super monkey. Uh, I don't know if strong is mean enough to get, get enough damage out of this sub. But if this isn't, I'm going to call this run almost done already. Unless I swap to logs, in which case, maybe. Oh, we made it happen. Positioning wise, I don't know. I think down here makes the most sense, to be honest. But I'm going to put him here anyway. I'm going to put it down here. Uh, that last bit of chasing is actually really important here. And uh, it could easily be screwed up. So anyways, with this plan, there is only, in my opinion, one way that we can take this all the way. Okay, it's got to be the anti-blue. We could try Dark Champion as a maybe, maybe, maybe kind of scenario. He does pop all types of balloons and everything. But to be honest... I don't know. I don't know if he's going to be able to, to, to be strong enough because the tech terror is really what carries us on this map for a long time. Okay, there we go. And we can't afford that. Oh! Uh, and then I need to go for a blue turning reactor pretty soon as well just to like get the blue pop power going to like get me started in here. But any which way, I mean, we can decide later on. But for now, I'm thinking we go middle path. I would be honest, that bottom path is kind of calling to me. Still unsure. Maybe I'll get a 0 2, two just to start and see where it leads us. So we need an angry sub to pop the leads. Good to know. All right, first Moab. I've got a 0 2, one, zero, two, two. Oh, the decision, the decision. Man, this is a tough one for us. Um, 
You know what? I think the problem is the anti balloon is just so expensive. Surviving with the tech terror is going to be ridiculously difficult. But again, the robo monkey and the tech terror are much more easily uh, uh, able to make a survival longer than just a simplistic little baby dark knight. Man, the dark knight's got to do all the work here. So I think I'm gonna try it anyways. I think the dark knight, if we can make it work with the energizer sub. Uh, even an energ Energizer sub, like, oh, holy crap, we can make some crap happen. Unfortunate thing is, I think it's just gonna be buy a Dark Knight, eventually lose to, you know, round 63 or something stupid, where we just, like, can't get enough money to make this happen, and saving up 60 grand is not easy. I mean, we're talking at least round 80 here, um, with just a simple little third-tier Dark Monkey, I mean, or Super Monkey, it just does not seem viable. So let's let's wait it out. Not gonna lie, I'm actually pretty impressed with the Dark Knight at this point. Um, I put him on strong, so he hits the Moabs first. Uh, pop the Moab layer. We can do some ceramic damage, and by the time it wraps around, even just a regular uh, regular old blue turning reactor, we pop a lot of the balloons. In addition, this slowdown is not anything to mess around with. I mean, just keeping up the balloons on the screen for a little bit longer. It's pretty awesome. We are uh, seven thousand dollars away from halfway there, which is. <laughs> A weird way to put it, uh, but w I mean, it's looking okay at this point. Like, I'm not, like, thinking we're going to lose. Plus, don't forget, I do have the ability to jump around anywhere on the map, which probably won't help us out that much, but having that opportunity just allows us a little more mobility, a little more ability to do something a little wild. Halfway there, here's a BFB. You can tell it's not a big deal. Um, I mean, 65's not going to be a big deal. Usually that means the late, si late 60s and the early 70s are not going to be a big deal, I think, except for the fact that we got round 63 coming up. Round 6-3 is not easy, no matter what you're doing, even with an Energizer sub, or even with a Balloon Turn Reactor. But here's the thing! We could afford an Energizer sub if it comes down to it. So I really don't want to do that. But knowing that that is an opportunity for us, or an option for us, is is kind of interesting. All right, here's 63. So first of all, this is kind of unfortunate. The, cer the lead balloons are getting in the way of the uh, ceramics. I don't like that. Not one bit. Uh, we have to really have to hope that the Energizer, or not the Energizer, the Nuclear Sub is just strong against the balloons, which he definitely is! First set goes down, I'm gonna warp him over here, because he is just getting annihilated by the lead, so we're gonna put him on first for a little bit. It's kind of weird to do that, but I think it's the best option for us. Um, and looks good, round 63 looks like it's gonna go down. Dang, dude, we just warp him right on back, and we're ready to go back on strong. Alright, we're about two-thirds there to a Dark Champion, and once we get that Dark Champion, I strongly believe that it is G to the G. I think we win. Ooh, this is kind of interesting. Oddly enough, uh, we gotta move this guy to first, I think, because regen ceramics on round 72 are kind of an issue, um, but not too big of an issue, and we just warp around and we make some crap happen. Uh, that's one thing that we could not do if we had a middle path uh, Super Monkey. We could not warp, we could not adjust that much. We could try to target first, last, close, and strong a little better, because we do have those two different ways to target. But dang, would that suck if we got it wrong, or that positioning wrong. Um, the good news is, is that we're only 8,000 miles away. The unfortunate news is round 75 and 76 are coming up, and oh my god, I'm really afraid. Uh, 75, probably doable. 76, though, there's no way with just a regular Boon Tony Reactor. We'd have to go Energizer, and that just sets us up for another, like, 20 rounds of trying to survive this guy. It's gonna be freaking terrible. Let me be honest, it's gonna be freaking terrible if we have to do that. I don't want to do it, but it might be a thing. All right, let's leave him on strong here for a little bit and see, just see what happens. All right, so we need to make $4,000 on run 75 or $4,000 on run 75 plus a smidge of round 76. All right, we got lead balloons getting in the way, which is absolutely horrific. I hate the idea of that, but luckily we're still popping through the BFB layer with this thing. We got a reinforced Moab sneaking through uh, near the front of the map already. We might have to swap this guy to first or, or maneuver him around a little bit. I don't want to pop all those BFBs, so we're going to put swap him back to first for a little bit. Um, got a lot of balloons here, like a lot of balloons, like way too many balloons, and I'm gonna move my Super Monkey to the back of the map at this point, back-ish of the map, still kind of centrally-ish located, and the money's just not coming in. These are such low money rounds at this point. The good news is it looks like round 75 will go down, and we're gonna have about $2,000 away. Oh my god, that sucks so much. Round 76 is gonna be freaking brutal, isn't it? Alright, so the best thing for us to do is to not... Um, let's wait, let's wait. Now we're on round 76, we're gonna move this guy to the back of the map, we want him to pop things next to the Energizer sub, and that is it. Next to the Energizer sub, and that is it. Oh my god, we're a thousand dollars away at this point, we're still popping some balloons, he's still on first, if I get a Dark Champion at any point during this round, we will win. Seven hundred dollars away, six hundred dollars away, seven hundred dollars away still, seven hundred dollars away, and we lose. Okay, so is there anything we can do here? 
Uh, I think we're screwed. I think we're 1,300 lows away, and I think we're screwed because of it. Um, the warps are not going to help. First is just... It's it's kind of like a thing that has to happen here, almost. Okay, let's just try something absolutely wonkalicious. Let's put him on last. Okay, I don't think this is going to work, but what if? What if we can magically just lastify him? Let the Enterprise sub, like, do his job, stun the balloons, or make enough money to make this happen? Like, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen here? Uh, back to first. Back to first. We gotta clean up some of these balloons in the front. No, oh my god, we regen so much. And we're $700 away, so... $700. Just out of curiosity, was there any other way that we could have done this? Could I have done this without a blue Tony reactor? And I think the answer is probably not. There were so many rounds that got really, really close with balloon popping power, and without this guy, like, round C3, we would be doomed. So, um, unfortunately, getting an Energizer sets us back another $36,000 from getting a Dark Champion. And I think that is going to bite us in the butt and take us down. But here's the good news. This guy is still not a bad tower. He still is able to micro. Uh, he's still able to pop Moabs and BFBs and even reinforced BFBs and stuff like that. So you know what? Maybe if we can make it to round 85, 86, we got a chance. A small chance, but a chance nonetheless. Plus, now the balloons. Any blue, any amount of balloons is also dead, and a bunch of Moabs are also going to be dead as well. So, uh, in addition, the Energizer got a buff in the recent update that allows us to unsubmerge him and make him do a pretty good amount of damage to the regular balloons. Now, normally that's not a thing, but on rounds like 80 or 85 or 87, it might actually help us out a little bit. This is a fairly big test for us, just to kind of like see what to expect, and round 80 goes down really easily. Like, no micro, no need to do anything crazy, just leave this guy in strong and let him go to town. And dang, this is looking like it might just be possible. Except now we're on round 80 plus and the balloons just got way stronger. So that's not fun. Not fun at all. Um, balloons are getting way stronger. Energizer Sub's trying to hang on here. He's still able to hit the balloons near the bottom down here, so even the greens can't sneak through. But holy crap, I lied. This is, this is really, really scary. Oh my goodness gracious, and that was just round 81. We still got like five, six, seven more rounds to go before we can afford it. To be honest, I did not think we were gonna make it this far. I thought we were gonna be doomed by this point, but uh, we're still going. Um, not strong, but we are going. And we don't need to go strong, because as soon as we get that $5,000, $4,000 that we need, it's gonna change completely in our favor. We're gonna start dominating really hard for a while. Um, but will it take us to round 100 though? That is the real question here. Okay, uh, I'm gonna have to swap this guy back to first here. The good news is, again, this round will be the Dark Champion round. We're just about there. Dark Champ is officially up. He's on first, and now it's time to dominate. This two-tower chimps run feels good. I think we're gonna go all the way with this one. Don't promise anything, Chris. Don't promise anything. We're not there yet, and I definitely don't enjoy the fact that I have epic range instead of the Plasma Blast. Of course, it helped us out um, up until this point jumping around wherever we need to, but the Plasma Blast is more powerful, okay? So, you know, it kind of sucks not having that thing. That being said, owning reinforced BFBs as soon as they walk in is definitely a pretty good feeling here. In fact, such a good feeling, I'm gonna warp this guy to the very front and let him get his damage in right away, and I can warp him kind of wherever I want to uh, at any point beyond the start of the round here. Oh yeah, that looks great. I'm gonna leave him on first for now. I don't even think I need to swap to strong or anything. Just let him go. All right, things are still going pretty gosh darn fantastic at this point. Um, well, I shouldn't say fantastic. It's going good enough. I mean, you can tell the balloons are starting to try to overwhelm us hardcore. Um, the Moa popping power is definitely our uh, our biggest limitation at this point, which is odd because this guy's usually dominant against the uh, uh, the big balloons. Uh, but if we can take down round 96 like that without any warping or anything, round 98 shouldn't be a big deal, especially if we start to micro by putting this guy in strong at first and move him to first and close and last kind of as, as needed. Um, that being said, at this point, money is worthless. We cannot do anything with it. We're never going to afford a Legend of the Night. We can't get any uh, sixth tier engineer action, so we're kind of stuck with what we got at this point, but I don't think it matters. Um, the big question for me is round 98, and possibly round 99 could still kill us, but I don't think the bad will. So, uh, yeah, well, let's, let's wait and see, but boys, let's see, wait and see. Round 97, I'm not even going to micro it, I'm going to wait it out, looks good, just to get some bouncy bounce action and everything, 97 goes down, round 98, we're going to move this guy to strong for a little bit. I want to kill this Oh My Gods pretty quickly, which is kind of weird. Okay, uh, I want, obviously, the Energizer to be maximizing his total popping power capabilities, uh, so, as long as I'm hitting my max pierce count, we're doing good here. But unfortunately, I gotta switch him, swap him back to first, 
Oh boy, okay, so I screwed up. I screwed up. Everything got screwed up. Okay, so no problem. Um, we're gonna leave him on first for a little longer here. Um, basically, my problem here is that I can't let a single bow sneak through, and I can't pop all the reinforced uh, uh, bow webs or ceramics here at all. So I'm kind of like just stuck. Like, like I'm just stuck with with just trying to pop the first balloon almost. Otherwise, I'm gonna screw up um, kind of everything. So positioning wise, this just doesn't feel right. I'm gonna warp him down here, even though that seems a little bit silly. Uh, we gotta take them BFEs first, and then deal with those oh my gods later. Looks like it's working out very well for us right now, though. Still got a lot of balloons on the screen, though. Like, a lot of balloons on the screen. Ceramics trying to overwhelm us right here. We're gonna say, no, oh, get out of my face. Dark Knight fighting near the back of the map here, but fighting oh so well. And that is perfection. We're gonna warp him up over here. And I'm gonna try to warp him back over towards the front of the map before round 99 and hopefully have enough time to get back uh, my ability again. So we're gonna warp him, like, right about here so I can hopefully get close to the DDTs as they start running through, and then I want to be able to warp one more time if I need to, either down here or whatever, to pop around 99. Um, yeah, let's see what happens. Hopefully we need no warps and round 99 just goes down easily. Uh, mobs are going down. I'm going to aim the camo balloon specifically because I want to hit the DDTs if possible. All right, first DDT. Dang, uh, we're still on... Sh Whoa, why does it look like we're not doing what I want him to do? I don't know. But DDTs are all going to kind of go down together, I guess? That's actually fine. Yeah, okay, perfect. 99 goes down. Oh, baby! The two tower chips with random towers. Only took us, like, what, seven tries? And it's finally going to happen, hopefully. We got to get about 26,000 pops with uh, this guy alone to even have a chance here. And we're at, like, 5K, 6K now, 7-ish K, 8-ish K, 9-ish K, 10-ish K, 11-ish K, we're about halfway there. He's about halfway through the map, though. That scares the crap out of me. All right, we're going to warp him. I got some room to work with here. Uh, oh, boy. This is definitely sketch. I got to pop those CDs in the very back of the map. That's not fun to think about. All right, little bad balloon. You must you must succumb. All right, we're going to warp him back. I got one more warp in me if I need it. Energizer Sub's going to do absolutely nothing here. At least not yet. Oh, there we go. DDTs go down. Oh, yeah, they do. Two Zoma Gods left. I can warp them again if I want to, but I don't even think it's necessary. It's just two Zoma Gods. We just popped like 30 of them. Holy crap. What a magical game, my friends. And finally, we have been... Uh, this is a little scary here. We have been successful. <laughs> All right. Well, that was a long journey. That was, that was like a two-hour plus journey of me trying to beat a two-tower chimps on, on random towers. And I officially did that random. I did not do any secret, like, pressing buttons to eventually get random towers. Uh, I actually did it fully random. That was the first, like, six or seven randoms that I got. So, dang, dude. We did it. If you guys enjoyed, press that like button, subscribe, and have a super-duper delicious day.